हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे टॉपिक इज डी प्लूरोला कॉन्सेप्ट एंड इकानोडोम थ्योरी ऑफ ऑरिजिन ऑफ कॉटेट्स द टर्म डी प्लूरोला वाज कॉइंड बाय सीमन इन 1888 बट द प्रॉपर इल्यूस्ट्रेशन ऑफ दिस हाइपोथेटिकल फॉर्म वाज गिवन बाय बैथर इन 1900 which was accepted by most of the zoologist majority of echinoderms have indirect development with free swimming and bilaterally symmetrical larval stages these echinoderms have small eggs and the fertilized eggs develops in sea water the cleavage is holoblastic nearly equal radial and intermediate to form a hollow one layered ciliated blastula the blastula then transforms into grastula by evagination the cilia of the grastula are restricted to a large preoral band present around the mouth on the ventral side and a small adural band lining the mouth or stomodium this larval stage is called the pleurula larva this larval form is regarded as the hypothetical ancestral form of the echinoderm as this larva is universally present in all echinoderms and form it all the larvae of echinoderms have been derived so this larva represents an ancestral form for the primitive deuterostomes we can see all well known forms of larval of echinodermata are derived from the hypothetical larva of this larva okay among them among them fall the bipinaria and the branchiostomata branchiolaria of the sea stars auricularia of the sea rollers and the putae of the sea hedgehog etc so the de pleurola concept was pronounced by bather in 1900 the common ancestors did not possess all the common characteristics or characters of the free swimming bilateral larva of the different groups of the echinoderms and it might add one or two characters which none of them possess hence it appears that the de pleurola concept cannot illustrate the common ancestors of the echinoderms or can explain the characteristics features of the ancestors of echinoderms so this concept is merely a name of features common to present echinoderm larvae echinoderm theory of origin of chordates it is believed that chordates have originated from invertebrates it is difficult to determine from which invertebrate group the chordates developed chordate ancestors were soft bodied animals hence they were not preserved as fossils there are several theories have been put forward it to explain the origin of chordates these are directly from some invertebrates group or through the intervention of some protochordates almost every invertebrate phylum coelenterates nematuran phononida annelida arthropods echinoderms has been suggested but these theories are far from being satisfactory and convincing and have been only historical value only echinoderm theory has received some acceptance echinoderm theory was given by jonens and muller in 1860 in 1860 and is based on the comparative studies of larval stages of echinoderms 
and hemicortex. Gastung and Devers proposed the echinoderm larva that is gave rise to chordates by neoteny. This theory infers origin of chordates. Hemicordates and echinoderms from a common ancestors. This theory is based on the following evidence. So what are the evidence? Embryological evidence. Both echinoderms and chordates have enterocilomic coelom that is mesoderm and deuterostom mouth. There is resemblances between the bipinaria larva of echinoderms and the ternaria larva of hemicordates. Serological evidence A close similarity between the proteins of the body fluid of the chordata and echinoderms. Hence the chordata are more related to the echinoderms. The radial symmetry of the adult echinoderms will disapprove the relationships with the bilaterally symmetrical chordates. The divisions prostomia and deusteromia the division is based on the differences in the embryonic and larval development. Prostomia includes form annelida to arthropoda, while deuterostomia includes echinodermata, pogonophora, and chordates. Deuterostome line of chordate evolution. Following common features of deuterostome suggest strong evidence of a closer evolutionary relationships between the three principal deuterostome phyla echinodermata hemicordata and chordata early cleavage of chigot is indeterminate blastophore of crastula develops into anus coelom that is enterocilous acid vertebrates is formed by the fusion of pockets developed from the endoderm of developing archaeandrion of the embryo. Pelagic larva of ectoderms and hemicordates have a close resemblance vertebrate doesn't have a floating larva. They have a close resemblance but they doesn't carry a floating larva. Okay. Deuterostomes use creatinine as phosphate group or phosphagen whereas invertebrates use arginine. Some hemicordata as well as echinoderms or echinoids use both arginine and creatinine as the phosphagen or phosphate group. Echinoderm ancestry. The hemicordate larva, that is tornaria larva, is strictly similar to the larva bipinaria or diplerilla of echinoderms. Both are small, transparent, free swimming, bilaterally symmetrical. Both have similar ciliated band in the lobes or a dorsal pore, sensory cilia at the anterior end and a complete digestive system out of ventral mouth and posterior anus. This molar and beds on to suggest a common ancestry for the echinoderms and the hemicordates. Dissimilarities and doubts are Presence of apical plate with eye spots in tornaria larva builds doubts the common ancestry of echinoderms and hemicordates. Gaston and D. Beers proposed the neotinous larva theory suggesting that probably the auricularia larva of echinoderms became sexually mature and later this Neotenic larva gave rise to chordates. Cambrian and Ordovician fossil Cambrian and Ordovician fossil records of carapoid 
echinoderm lead to tostum and gestion to assume that carapoid echinoderms might have evolved from tornaria like creatures which have begin begun to settle down to lead sedentary sedentary life to lead sedentary life the water vascular system might have developed out of the ciliated groups of these creatures besides this if it was claimed that in the lower silurian wa- period one of the carapoid echinoderm had the calyx perforated by a series of 16 small apertures these apertures can be compared with the gill slits of branchiostoma some isolated biochemical studies needham in 1932 and wellmi in 1942 put some weight on the concept of the diversion of caudates from echinodermates most of the non caudates use arginine phosphate of the transfer of energy but ophironoids cephalocaudates ascidian and vertebrates use creatinine phosphate on the other hand hemicaudata and echinoderms use both arginine and creatinine phosphate as the phosphate carrier the descent of caudata hemicaudate ancestry there is a strong suggestive evidence that the early evolutionary stages of deuterostomia was sessile or sedentary the pharynx perforated by gill slits is likely an adaptation to sedentary habit no doubt hemicaudates are sedentary and have pharyngeal gill slits and a hollow dorsal nerve cord nevertheless the presence of a true notochord is doubtful and their adult body plan is quite different from the vertebrates therefore the prospect of some hemicaudates as a likely ancestor of vertebrates seem to be impossible eurocaudate ancestry the eurocaudate or ascidian theory of vertebrate origin was advocated by w garsting in 1928 and later elongated by n j barili in 1955 in his book origin of vertebrates the adult tunicates reflect the primitive sessile marine and filter feeding condition of the ancestral vertebrates but their body plan are so divergent that it is impossible to imagine a direct evolutionary transformation of an adult ascidian into a vertebrate on the other hand the ascidian larva are tadpole like elongated bilaterally symmetrical and free swimming creatures with pharyngeal gill slits notochordorsal hollow nerve cord and muscular post anal tail they represent only slightly modified living creatures of the ancestral vertebrates that gave rise to vertebrate line of evolution according to this theory some of these larva fail to metamorphose into adults but become newtonious and later evolved into the cephalocaud cephalocaudates and vertebrates the sessile nature of the primitive caudate ancestry hemicaudates primitive pterobranch and echinoderm is considered by the workers resulting from common ancestry however the ascidian theory of caudate origin doesn't seem to be perfect the principal drawback is that the theory considers sessile eurocaudate 
to be ancestral to the chordates whereas they are highly specialized because sessility is a specialized condition wherever it occurs in animal kingdom